Hello, my name is Kayleen Reeser. Welcome to another episode in my series of stories from my World War II books. Today's story will be taken from book three, book four in my World War II Legacies series. It is called We Defended Freedom, Adventures of World War II Veterans. And actually, it'll be this man right here who we will be talking about. And his name is Roy Bennett, and he served in the Army in Europe. In spring of 1944, the 91st Division of the U.S. Army, Company E, passed through Rome, Bologna, and Milan. The fighting was ruthless, ending with hard-fought Allied victories. We were a show of force, said Roy, Roy Bennett of Angola, Indiana. Unfortunately, I lost a lot of friends. Bennett was born in 1925 in Canastota, might have said that wrong, sorry, New York, the oldest of three children. Upon graduating from high school in 1943, he was encouraged by his father, a car mechanic, to apply for a deferment to farm. But the Army wanted Roy, and he was drafted that fall. After passing a physical exam in Syracuse, Roy Bennett submitted two written exams at Long Island. I wanted to go into the Army Air Corps to be a mechanic, he said, but the Army assigned him to the infantry. He rode a troop train to Camp Blanding in Florida for military exercises and instruction. In June of 1944, Bennett reported to Fort Meade in Maryland and Camp Patrick Henry in Virginia for additional training. Then he disembarked with thousands of other troops from the East Coast on a luxury liner converted to a troop ship. It was so crowded that we slept on the promenade deck, he said. For several weeks, soldiers gazed at the endless ocean. They were unaware of their destination, but knew the enemy was near. German submarines patrolled the Atlantic in groups called wolf packs with the goal of sinking troop ships. For protection, Bennett's vessel sailed in a convoy with a Navy destroyer and its big guns. But being in a convoy was no guarantee of safety. On October 19th of 1940 and days following, German U-boats sank 28 ships, the worst Allied losses of the war. Thankfully, Bennett's group didn't encounter any U-boats. When the troops landed at Naples, Italy, they pushed inland with British forces. Each soldier carried his own supplies, including tent parts, which were shared with buddies during bivouacs. The troops survived on C rations and K rations. Often as they passed through villagers, soldiers witnessed children begging for food. We gave some of our rations to them, he said. During basic training, soldiers were taught to take orders from superior officers. When Bennett's captain told him to deliver a message to Allied headquarters north of Rome, Bennett immediately set off. Passing through a village, he barely had time to duck when a shot rang out from a clock tower. It was a German sniper. Lying in the dirt, Bennett's back ached. He ignored the pain, though, and completed his mission before returning to his unit. Over the next several days, the pain in his back grew worse. Bennett checked in with a medic. After an exam, he boarded a plane to Florence for more x-rays. At first, nothing could be seen as the cause for the pain. Finally, medical staff discovered the problem a four-inch sliver of shrapnel under the skin. The piece was removed and Bennett received several doses of penicillin, which heated his recovery. Bennett returned to his unit near Rome. He was embroiled in more fighting. When Allied forces secured the area, he and other soldiers received a pass to visit the city as part of their R&R, or Rest and Recreation. I was not Catholic, he said, but I saw the Pope and St. Peter's Cathedral. On May 8th of 1945, Germany surrendered. The day became known as VE Day, which stood for Victory in Europe Day. 
However, the war in the Pacific continued. Allies moved steadily closer to Japan by gaining control of islands in the area. Scuttlebutt said a major Allied invasion was scheduled for Japan in late 1945. In early August, the Allies changed the course of the war when they dropped bombs on the Japanese cities of Nagasaki and Hiroshima. After the deaths of thousands of people and much destruction, the Japanese Emperor finally admitted defeat. It was the first time in the history of the Japanese to do so. When Victory in Japan, or VJ Day, was announced on August 14th of 1945, everyone was relieved in the U.S. There was much celebration around the world. Talk about happy guys, said Roy Bennett. President Truman's decision to drop the bombs was difficult, but an invasion would have cost a lot of lives. We troops knew the Japanese people were willing to die for their emperor. Private First Class Bennett was officially discharged in November 1945. He sailed on the USS Washington to Newport News, Virginia. The best meal I ever ate was at the base when we returned, he said. He was awarded a Purple Heart with Oak Leaf for sustaining injuries in battle. Bennett's return to his home was without fanfare. I threw pebbles at the window of my brother's room to wake him and have him unlock the door, he said. Bennett married, and he and his wife Marjorie became parents to a daughter. He worked for a business that tested equipment for the Air Force, and he participated with an honor flight in New York State. I had some scary moments in the war, he said. We all did what we could, and I'm proud of it. All right, again, that's my story of Roy Bennett, whose picture is right here on my cover, taken from my book, We Defended Freedom, Adventures of World War II Veterans. This is book four in my World War II Legacies series. Thanks for listening. I hope that these stories that I read to you each week are encouraging and that they just develop your sense of patriotism and love for our country. I believe we live in the greatest country in the world. Thanks to all the veterans watching. Um, we wouldn't be free without you. Please subscribe to the channel. Tell others about it. And, you know, just tell other veterans thank you as well. All right, I'll be back next week. See you then.